Now I'm on stick, and stick is so much harder. Oh, we got Pax versus Fro one one six. Um, well, if you didn't like, if you didn't get enough on the Marth Ma Marth Fox before, we've got some uh, we've got an extra helping. I remember about like two years ago, people were like, "Why are you looking at the Marth matchup? This region has no Marths." Well, top eight filled with Marths. You know, it's almost like we can see are, the future. Yeah, it's inevitable. It's just some things are inevitable. My betting, my betting score, like my betting record is so good. Oh. Who do you have? Oh, here I have Axe. What? Here I have Axe. Okay. Um, Axe is just consistently in grand finals. Yeah. He's like and I mean, when, you, when you've been playing this game at a top level as long as he has, right, there is a certain degree of, it doesn't matter if someone's a better player than you, you've just been here so many more times that they aren't able to pull away. And when players can't pull away and you have to play you even down to the end, it is so hard to keep your composure. And that is something Hax has learned how to do. Yeah, something Hax really, I think, strives to do is to reduce variance. Mm -hmm. um, he likes to like basically like plan out and flowchart all of his punishes, and like mm -hmm. kind of like put the opponent in a position where they need to kind of like react to him. Um, I think it leads him to being pretty consistent for the most part. Um, he can kind of like consistently toss up most players, which I think is you know Hax best of five. That's what all those hours go into. And that's really the thing, right? That's why you see so many players build such elaborate flow charts. The difficult part is when you get over reliant on them, right? You get forced into a scrap, or you get the chink in your flow chart armor found out. Then you aren't as practiced in those scrap situations, and it can really be hard for you to come back from it. It, it Fro managing to keep this one close, but finding a beautiful set of F smashes to take the first two stocks, but trying to build any sort of a lead the counter just to get back on stage, but you have to find more than that. You have to make a real advantage state here. And dropping the grab, you're gonna have another drop and a reset. Maybe able to get something started. I'm really surprised that they started Dreamland. I feel like this would be a stage that Hacks would really like. Uh, I mean, I, I would be curious to know who won, you know, if, if they did strike for this first stage and, and who one RPS. My bet is that Hax like took out like po uh, Pokemon Stadium and FOD, and then Yoshi's in Battlefield because you know, New York Battlefield. That's uh, a good fan. But I'd much rather take like a Yoshi's here even over a Dreamland. And I feel like that was much e a much easier stage to strike to than getting here. Usually this is like the first stage to be striked. It's um, just so big. But it's working out for Fro. I'm yeah. I'm really glad. Yeah, he's doing great. And that's the benefit, right? When you have when you have a stage with really large blast zones, it can it can really hurt Marth because Marth has arthritis. Yeah, I think you could have done the zoo there However, and just like mm -hmm. I think you could have done the zoo and just like gone out and like back air. Yeah, he could have. Uh, kind of scared to swing on him. I was gonna say you, with, but Fro got a lot of mileage there off of lining up, not even not even a Ken combo, but just lining up other down airs, finding opportunities to negate the large blast zones of Dreamland there and just make use of the broader onstage space to really just outwit Hax's flowchart game. Oh, yeah. Okay, according to Nels, uh, this is a Fro Classic going to Dreamland first. That's really surprising. Uh, that is, that's crazy man behavior. Oh. Um, all right, starting off strong here for Hax. Hax Shimani. There's that, a lot of these marks like to swing a lot. There's not like a lot of those like more like patient slow marks um, on this side of the coast, at least in the tri-state vicinity. I was gonna say, but the thing is you see a lot, right, at the at the top level too. The marks are getting so good that they're implementing that spacing into this higher pace of play with Marth, right, that slower, like at the top level, that slower type of Marth play has got, is starting to go away as the Marths just pick up their pace of play doing that. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of the newer Marths are trying to learn the faster pace of play with the character before the spacing, because yeah. at the end of the day, it's easier to learn the spacing than it is to learn to play that fast. That's true. Uh, Nels, uh, forgive me for my ignorance, but is Fro an old head, or is he, uh, or is he like Doc Kid era? Or is he new? Uh, I believe he's been playing for at least six years. Oh, OK. So I, like, I think. Probably Doc Era-ish. Lou definitely has the data. Yeah. He has the lore. He has the NYC lore. Because um, when I think about like people that say download, I always think about like older players. Um, 
I think a, a, a trademark of newer players versus older players is prep versus like in game. I think a lot of older players are good at like adapting in game, where uh, a lot of newer players focus on the preparation aspect. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that kind of just comes from laughing culture, I think, for the most part. And I mean, and then the bad players, right, marry the two. Yeah. And that is that is really the, th the thing that unless you are Mango, and even Mango now, right, you, you can't get away without preparation, but if you don't adapt, then it doesn't matter how well you prepare. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, and I think a really interesting thing is like, even like at these locals, you know, like a lot of the same people come over and over and over again. So you get adapta adaptations over set versus over set. Uh, and like you get used to each other's play styles. So it's like this melding of like in-game adaptations um, and layers of gameplay on top of like, you know, like hours and hours of history of fighting each other, which I really like. That's really cool. That's why uh, go to your locals, you know. Le download someone. Even if you don't download them the first time, download them like the fifth time. It could work out. Now in game number three, right, we're here not just fighting for counter pick advantage, but fight, but fro fighting to see if he can defend Final Destination against the hacks money on slot. Able to get off to a good fast start there with with the ledge hog to close out the first stock, but not able to find too much of a lead here as hacks is going to find the shine and just keep things nice, close, and even. I, I just love how he just practices his tech skill on the edge. Instead Why not? Of, instead of like trying to like bait him into going anywhere, he's just, just like coming to me. Oh, and here's where it gets so doing. But the oh, other thing, too, stats. when you have the name advantage, right, when you have the player skill or experience advantage that Hax does really against most people, well, when you practice tech oh. skill at the ledge like that, it can be scary because it communicates to oh. your opponent, I'm just better than oh. you. Oh, oh, oh. Tries to tag with a jab, maybe to link it to an smash, or a cool. That's my dice. It's going to be so risky with that. Mm -hmm. He's still going to be living just for the moment, but Hacks again, right, setting up the tech skill. Not going to find the immediate end of the stock, but going to have another opportunity to do so, and going to close it out that time with a quick little neutral getup. And beautiful stuff from him, keeping this one close, but chain craft time. Chain craft time. Oh, yep. I love that double shine. I've been, like, hyping up that, like, you know, aerial shine, gimp off the ledge mm -hmm. thing for so long now. I think it's so strong. Um, if I see any character on the ledge like that, you just gotta double shine them. You know, you can even mix it with shine grab if they're like holding their shield and like you're a little late. It's just like, it's the future. You gotta spam that game. Ooh, get in, try, throw trying to get a little bit tricky there with the pivot grab and just not confident. Gonna lose his stock for his trouble. And just like that, Hax is one stock away from taking the FD victory. However, there's more Fox and anything can happen. Yeah, Fro does not, ooh. <laughs> what are you doing here? Oh, uh, that was great. Got the invisible, like the, like the weird shine cancel. I don't know what it is, but it's like kind of like a semi-invisible shine. But you still got your hitbox. Or actually, no, it is invisible shine. Oh, let's see if we can get it. Wave land in. That was pretty smart. You know, you could just hold down, take it, and just react to anything like that. And, th and this is where that right, that flow chart prep that you talked about from Hacks is so oh, strong. No. Because oh, it's no. Because it's your This is a ha first opportunity, though, to find his way back ah. into it. Can he ah. make it happen? And Hacks missing the short and just like that. Oh, that was so messy. Hacks had that game in the bag and just let it slip through his fingers. Unfortunate. But this is winner's final. So even if he ends up dropping this set, right, he still has life left in this bracket. Oh, he's just like, <laughs> that was so unfortunate. Oh my god. Go next. Go next. Oh, it's fun with that man. I like that man. Go for the air again. Nice. I tried. Oh, no tech choice. Yep, that's like the main thing. You know, jumping before. Or did he SDI? I'm not sure. But I'm pretty sure it's the uh, bar stuff. Uh, on the map, yes, box. This thing's just so scrappy. Sometimes I'm like, I think I know what's going on. And I'm like, maybe they're just trying to hit each other. Like sometimes, like I oversmart some players. A lot, of, like a lot of this is just like, you know, in your muscle memory. Um, um, I like kind of the way Hacks. I think going to the stage is best here because you kind of just get to like mix up whether you're going to side flat or whether you're going to ledge. And like if you're confident on the ledge, which obviously he is, um, it's just so good for you. I also like that. As weird as it sounds, Hacks has actually simplified his game plan a little bit here on Yoshi's this game. And it's really working wonders for him. And after just missing the short, and, and he's kind of leaned off 
being quite so technical. Still a very technical player, obviously, but just hasn't gone for quite the same top level of stuff, I say, as he misses a ledge dash and loses stock for it. But it's giving him more chance, just consistency. Which is weird to say that Hacks needs that, but it feels like this set, that is what he needs. Yeah, you kind of need to, like, better player the other guy, mm -hmm. you know? You don't need to, like, do all this fancy stuff, all these layers sometimes. You gotta be like, you know what? I can just throw you off the ledge and kill you. What have you been doing? Or you just right now, right now. And I think that's been working out. I think, you know, Fro is getting edge guarded. Like, he's pretty much died to exclusively edge guards. Um, at, like, pretty mid percent too. So, like, he hasn't been, like, exploding off the side of stage or anything like that. I was gonna say, the Marth, the Marth giveth and the Marth taketh away. Oh, yeah. Ah. Oh, oh. Oh, up. I like the up smash attempt there, but it's definitely a swing for the fences because you're down three stocks and haxing the opportunity the second it misses, capitalizes on that blood in the water. And we're going to a game number five. Eh? Game five. We're going to Pokemon, right? I can hear it. Yep. yep. I was going to say, do you think, do you, do you still have hacks taking this set now? Yeah. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Uh, I think if he doesn't like, like a too I like, think like, I think a lot of time Hacks tries to do some like level two, three, maybe like even like seven, like kind of often. <laughs> uh, Who needs four, five, and six? We're just going straight to seven. Yeah, and I like, I think like I'm like, oh my god, I like I totally see your vision here, but sometimes I'm like, your your opponent is not thinking of this. Yeah, and and that's the thing, right? You can get too big brain that your opponent actually just counterplays you completely by accident because they're just not thinking on that level. Yeah, it's just like kind of getting lost in the sauce, you know. Uh, and that's, like, a, that's kind of like the it's like the devil in the details, you know? Mm -hmm. And hey, I mean, if you're going to get lost in the sauce, at least get lost in the awesome sauce. That's true. He did make a dude duck. I'm still watching it. I watched it in the shower. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's that's what awesome. I'm doing after after nightclub tonight, unironically. Oh, so I'm, yep, as I'm watching nice. awesome sauce. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite. That's literally my favorite, like, like trap setup. Mm -hmm. uh, Hold on, this could be a big opportunity for Fro. Has the edge guard attempt, but gonna opt for the ledge hog instead. Hack smartly going high, but not out of the water just yet. Okay. Getting carried vertically off the fares and getting swatted left, right, and center, but Fro just not uh, able to pin him down. Yeah, go back to the ledge. Just chill out. Oh. Oh. The hard part about this percent is that you kind of just need to run up shield and hope you can make it in at a time. Uh, go off. Oh! Oh. Missed up his... JC up smash. Didn't do a jump smash very well. Oh, his life is saved. Oh, not anymore. That was just a beautiful little reaction follow up from Fro, right? To find, to not just find his way out, out of dodge in the scary situation, but to convert it into a stock. That level of composure is hard to come by and even harder to get experience with. That's pretty good. Oh. Deja vu. I feel like I've been here before. Yeah, total deja vu. Um, I feel like you'll see that a lot. I think a lot of these edge guards, Hacks kind of just like sticks to it, the same edge guard like like once per game. Like he's like, I like this one today. I'll do it. And I kind of respect that. Yeah. It's, it's like Hacks just has like five shirts and is just like, which edge guard do I want? What do yeah. I want to wear today? I think also because he's cool. Apparently it's uh, the missed ledge dashes. Hacks, uh, Hacks trying to ruin your perfect record for the night, eh? Yeah. Maybe so. Hey, if there's money on this, I might take like a, I might take an over under. I love taking time bets. That's my favorite one. I love that stall there with the dancing blade to find your way. A, a back to stage for a moment, but just hacks too clean with it. Gonna keep it close, and now the drills. Oh, he has grab. finding the pressure, but oh. can he keep it going? Oh. The reversal situation oh. is huge, but the miss grab. It's a full-on scramble. Can hacks close it out with the oh. corner? Oh. oh my god! Hold on. Oh, oh, oh my god! That was a That's great it. reaction. That wow, was awesome.